Hello. Um, so, quick little bit of business for this video. As of, so, the previous episode of the Anime Explorations podcast, the one covering the conclusion of Stardust Crusaders, was recorded before and scheduled and edited before the guidance came out from sag regarding podcasts and covering struck materials. That said, the week following that, I had a fairly extended email conversation with a couple various representatives of sag podcast team, basically trying to hash out and nail down what their policies are on anime. And the short answer is foreign language dubbed works are currently not struck. Period. Um, those are, like, as of this recording, they are not struck. And sag is not <clears throat> doing any sort of boycott or calling for a boycott of platforms that they are hosted on. So, but they would prefer, but they're not making a big thing about it if you didn't make a big deal over what platforms is hosting them if they are struck platforms. So, in other words, um, talking about anime is okay. That's foreign dubbed anime is okay. Um, stuff that was marketed as anime, but I would not necessarily consider anime like the... Um, well, the Castlevania animated series and the, yeah, like that, that, that's a pretty good, like, yeah, that and critical roles and asterisks, they have a, there are, I mean, they're a, it's a production company who's doing this that is run by sag after members. So... I think they have a separate contract that's not impacted by this. So, I don't know about them, but Netflix Castlevania, no. Nickelodeon is not a struck company. So, while so while Avatar the Last Airbender and related spin-off works are frequently described as anime, those are probably okay. I double check with them on that if you're doing your planning on doing a Avatar rewatch podcast anytime soon, but currently they're okay, I would think. Disclaimer, I am not a member of sag -Aftra. I do not speak for sag -Aftra, nor do I represent them in any way, shape, or form. But foreign language film, good. Foreign language dubbed film, good to talk about. As of this recording, the date is uh, July 29th, 2023. Card is subject to change, as they say. So, um, related to this, um, we had over the past few days a discourse with, not just with SAG After, but with other po anime podcasters and just podcasters in general who I follow t regarding this. And one of the podcasts that I follow um, on, they did an episode that they put out discussing this. I'm not going to put them on blast. I'm, I'm going to be nice about this. Um, they did some talking um, about the policy and that sort of thing. And there was a thing that was said where one of the hosts of the show said that in his perspective, posting reviews on Letterboxd, should be considered scabbing because it promotes the idea that film has financial value and thus serves the purposes of the of the record of the uh, film producers. I'm like, look, this guy is a reasonably hardcore lefty. Uh, I I like to think of myself as left leaning, maybe not as hard as far left leaning as others, but I read that or heard that rather, and I thought for a minute. I'm like, isn't that like literally contrary of what the strike's about? Because in terms of 
not wanting to promote the idea that film has value and consequently the, the work of the artist who put stuff into film has value. Um, a massive part of this strike is blocking is the desire by SAG-AFTRA, by the Writers Guild, to block the use of using their work, written film work, um, filmed work, what voice work as training mechanisms or to create AI generated material using their performances. And not to mention doing so without their, without fair compensation for them. And not just for like big name actors, but even for like small background actors and extras, making sure that they, that a background extra doesn't get like digitally scanned and used in millions of films until doomsday without the actor, without the extra or their family or estate, depending on how long you keep doing it, um, getting justly compensated for their work. And that is a big deal, I think. And if, if you stand not just with like the union, but with the actors in the union, who the people who the union is supposed to represent, um, then you should honestly recognize that yes, as much as we would rather live in a socialist society, we live in a capitalist one. And even in a socialist society, people should be compensated for their work. People should be credited for their work. People, sh it, their work should be acknowledged and they should get something out of it beyond a little bit of warm and fuzzies. We don't live in the world of Star Trek. The next, we don't live in a post-scarcity society yet where we can, where I can make a, this bottle, another bottle of sparkling fizzy water with um, kiwi and strawberry in it um, out of a replicator for n nothing. That's not a world that exists at this time. It will not exist in our, till our grand, is impossible for that to exist even until our great grandchildren's lifetimes, possibly, if it can exist at all. So, no matter where you sit on this, like, if you sit on the far left, then you should be going, it's wrong for a corporation, a, a big corporation, to take a person's likeness and use it over and over again without them, get with, without their permission, without their knowledge or consent. If you only to the far, if you are a objectivist of the perspective of is a man not worth the sweat, not does not deserve the sweat of their brow, then the actor should be financially compensated for whenever their AI likeness or their um, AI training data for writing or their um, voice or what have you should be used because their initial sweat off of their brow was created or was used to do this. And the same way that um, songwriters get royalties when they someone, somebody else covers a piece of music, when if, um, or when a song should be is played on the radio, or what have you, their actors should be justly paid for that. Just for the beat, just for starters. And I would say for people such as myself, um, continuing to speak about film and television as art forms helps, I would think, strengthen the case of the striking workers and help support striking workers by highlighting the quality of the screenplays the quality of the acting performances that the that these casts are putting um, on screen for audiences to see. And, or in the case of animation, the work done by animators, by people 
in some cases who are, like particularly in Japan, or who are not fairly compensated for their work. And for us to recognize the effort that they have put into what they have done, into the these works of art that we see on our television screens, that we go and see in the theater, or watch on our phones, or tablets, or what have you, or project on our walls, and recognize the work for what it is what it is and that the people who made them are artists and as with any other artist they should be compensated for what they have done they should be fairly compensated for what they have done now i am going now i stand with the union i am in a union myself with my day job and so i'm not currently planning to do any video reviews on stuff that would fall into the category of struck work. No movie reviews or that sort of thing at this time. Or TV show reviews. Um, blog posts, they haven't said anything no about those, so I will. Con I may continue doing blog posts for if I go watch a movie on physical media DVD or, that, or go see it in the theater or that sort of thing. But no uh, video reviews of movies on this channel for a while. Uh, I'll probably stick with some book reviews and that sort of thing. Um, going through some of the back stuff and readapting those as I also read more, read more books on my breaks at work. But in any case, um, so that's where we are on those. Um, as far as where I stand, again, I stand with the unions. I encourage you, as the union has not, as of this recording, on on uh, July 29th, has not called for a boycott. And in fact, has encouraged people to go see movies and so that the people who, well, make them, the actors, the writers, can get royalties for them once a contract is signed. And, for that matter, I encourage you not just to talk about movies in a critical and analytical manner, but to talk about the performances, to talk about the screenplays, about the writing that goes into these movies and the acting, and think about the thought that goes into making those and what would be lost if you took the thought out of it, if you took the conscious thought out of this and entrusted the making of movies to a large language model algorithm. And that's what AI really is. It's a large language, it's a bunch of stuff in a database that shuffles together based on an algorithm. And that's, that's compared to the writing of William Goldman, the acting of Mark Ruffalo, or Anthony Hopkins, or Chow Yun-Fat, or Michelle Yeoh. In spite of, like, compared to that, what real people can do? Hey, I got nothing. And for that matter, AI can't do an acting performance, like, I can't, like, AI can't even do, like, fingers right. How well can an AI handle a person, like an, a background extra, like a real background extra, and something that holds up on a big screen or even on a 4K television? Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.